What's going on guys? My name is Chris, Horns Behind Enemy Lines. Uh, before I get into this video, I wanted to give a quick shout out to one of our viewers, uh, Mark Hogan. Mark contacted me uh, he, via email a couple weeks ago. He wanted to uh, send me a shirt, uh, a Texas shirt that he made. Um, you know, long story short, I believe Mark was a student uh, at UT, late 80s, early 90s, I wanna say. And uh, he, he had a friend who was on the football team and uh, you know his friend took him into the weight room at one at one time, and uh, there was a really cool poster. And this this right here, what I'm showing you on the back of this T-shirt, is 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 was one of the posters. And you know Mark took a picture of this poster at that time, and uh, you know saved it for later, and ultimately uh, put that on on this T-shirt right here. So Mark is selling these T-shirts uh, on eBay really really cool t-shirts i am a huge fan of the t-shirt uh i've worn it several times since i've had it and i've gotten complimented believe it or not even though i'm here in oklahoma people have commented on it uh you know people really like people really like it. it's a cool shirt uh if you're interested give it a look i'm gonna put the links to these shirts um in the description of this video uh so if you if that's something you're interested in pause the video go into the into the description click on the links and follow them so that you can pick out pick up a shirt for yourself really really cool shirt i highly recommend it just wanted to give a quick shout out to Mark Hogan, one of our viewers. Mark, if you're watching this, I really, really appreciate the shirt. Really, really like it. Thank you, Mark. Hook him. Enjoy the video, guys. Going to be giving a spring game review. Uh, most of you know I was able to attend uh, the spring game. It was really, really cool, really fun experience. Um, you know, I was able to link up with with a bunch with a, with a couple of the other YouTubers. Uh, you know, Steven and Tran over at Fanatic Perspective, uh, Lando, Homer. Uh, you know, Clint and Jeremy with Texas Football Talk, Kieran, all those guys. We had a really, really good time. Look out for a spring game vlog that I'll be coming out with. That'll be coming out pretty soon, um, you know, where I kind of document just the experience. Um, it's not really it's not really football based, but it is kind of just documenting my experience. You know, I'm not able to go to Austin a lot. So it, I, I, I did record some stuff. So be on the lookout for a spring vlog. But for this video specifically, I'm going to be running through a, a review of the spring game, breaking down, you know, specific things, uh, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly things I liked, things I saw. I'm going to be doing this with a buddy of mine, Michael, who you guys are going to meet right after this. What's going on everyone? Welcome in. My name is Chris. This is Horns Behind Enemy Lines. Before we get this thing started, just want to remind you all, you all know the drill. Uh, you know, be sure to like. Be sure to like this video, comment, subscribe, uh, all that. Share with your friends, with your family. Uh, you know, hit that notification bell. Uh, so you can be notifi notified every time I upload a video. Uh, you know, we got a, a little uh, different format right here. As you can see, I got I got a buddy of mine here. Um, you know, this is this here is Michael. Um, you know, a little bit about him. We, uh, me and him met at at a at a football game last year. Uh, the OSU OSU Texas game. Uh, heartbreaker of a game. Uh, and uh, we met there and, uh, you know, we kind of connected over social media and whatnot. We talk pretty much every day about Texas football. Um, he he lives in Oregon. So, you know, enemy territory, horns behind enemy lines. I don't know. It could be could be that maybe um, we're an enemy, an enemy to everybody, apparently. So um, he'll probably be coming on the show um, more than just this time uh we've talked about you know uh working together and whatnot so uh so yeah this is michael and we're gonna be what we're gonna be doing today guys is we're gonna be kind of uh giving giving a breakdown of the spring game just specifically the spring game uh kind of give our thoughts um you know, Michael here g gives good insight. You know, like I said, we talk all the time about uh, Texas football and whatnot. So he, he's got really good insight too. Um, I was at the spring game. He wasn't, he watched it, you know, he watched the, the uh, Longhorn Network feed, which I heard was kind of weird. Maybe you can touch on that a little bit when, when the time comes. Um, so, so, um, 
So yeah, we're just going to kind of touch on that. Um, you know, I, I got the perspective of being there at the game. Like I said, he got the perspective of, uh, of watching it on the, on the Longhorn network feed. So, um, yeah, dude, I'll, I'll start it off with you. Um, you know, we'll get into specific positions here in just a little bit, but overall, uh, just from what you saw, what did you think, um, you know, just from the Longhorn network feed as, as a whole? I mean, there wasn't two big surprises. We, we, we know the offensive line's a weakness. You know, we know we have great skill position players. One thing that kind of surprised me a little bit, though, like I thought the secondary played really well. Other than yeah. the back, I didn't I didn't really care for how, how some of the backups played. They were, you know, they look young, like Terrence Brooks. He looked like a 16 year old out there for sure. But yeah, the um, I thought the, the linebackers were kind of a pleasant surprise. I thought they were going to struggle a little bit more. That's kind of my main takeaway from it. A lot of things we would expect and a lot of things, I don't know. There wasn't too many huge surprises, I would say. For sure, for sure. Um, I, tell me, I, I guess we can go ahead and do this. Tell me, is there any way you can kind of describe what the problem was, you know, on the Longhorn Network feed? Like, because I know there was a little, I still don't even know, honestly, what the, what the problem was. Like, they were, they were trying to show too many ads, I think. And then they, like the, they wouldn't, they were, they were recording like after, after the commercial, you know, and they would already be like two plays in. And like when the, when the feed would come back on, they'd be in the middle of a play or they already like missed two plays. Like they didn't even show the Quinn interception. They just showed the replay. So it would be like, so it'd be like something would happen. And then like somebody would, something would happen while they were in commercial break, basically. Going while they're playing commercials, basically. Yeah. They were trying to show too many ads. (laughs) Yeah, that's brutal, man. That's brutal. Um, yeah, man. Same, same here. I, I, um, you know, I'm with, I'm with you on the, on the offensive line. Um, I think, I think, I mean, I, I touched on this in, I think the last video or the last video pertaining to spring that I came out with. Um, I think we got everything that we could out of this offensive line. I think there's bright spots, you know, I think there's bright spots in the offensive line. Um, Dude, Cole Hudson getting reps with the ones. I mean, he looked fine. I mean, at least from what I saw. Um, I think the first team played pretty well. I mean, the second team, yeah. they are, are – I don't think we're ever going to be – this group isn't ever going to be spectacular, I don't think. We need we need these freshmen really bad, you know. But I feel like the first team is going to be better. You know, I, I thought Christian Jones looked a lot better than what he did last year. He looked pretty physical, man. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I agree. Um, one thing that I – one thing uh, – uh, I get, we, we can probably talk, we can start with the offensive line here. There, we, we, there's no yeah. starting with the offensive line. Um, something that I kind of, that I kind of, I guess, kind of decided after, after rewatching it here, after rewatching it, you know, the, the replay on the TV, um, I, I, I'm kind of of the opinion that like, that some of these younger dudes are going to fall into their place. Kelvin Banks, you know, Devon Campbell, they're going to fall into their place and, you know, who knows, they'll probably end up taking starting positions, but those ones that were playing, uh, you know, for the starters that were playing, if we had to, you know, fall on that, those set of dudes, you know, Jake mm-hmm. Majors, Angelau, um, Hudson, Connor, and Jones, you had to at any point rely on those guys. I would be kind of, I would be okay with it. Yeah, because they do look better than last year, man. I will say that. Yeah. Yeah. We're I don't think we can really get any worse, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it, it it could definitely it could definitely be it could definitely be worse. However, you know, those those younger dudes can't come soon enough. Kelvin Banks, Devon sure. Campbell. Campbell and Banks are gonna start eventually. I, yeah. I, I just don't I don't know if they're gonna start week one and two but I feel like they're going to get in there and start, especially Banks, just because we lack so much of tackle. Campbell, to me, I think he's going to be a guard. I don't think Campbell's going to play tackle for us unless just the wheels completely fall off. And I, I don't picture that happening, but you, you never know. But yeah, I think Kelvin Banks, I think that's the most likely guy to get in there and start like ASAP, just because we lack so much of tackle, in my opinion. For sure. I'm with you. Yeah, dude, it's – it's. I think that – um I'm with you. I'm not sure. I'm not maybe week one, maybe not. Who knows? But at the end of the day, I think, you know, when we get into the end of November, I wouldn't be surprised if 
Devon Campbell, maybe a third guy, who knows, maybe, maybe another third guy, another third freshman is starting any, literally any of these dudes. Like, I mean, you can never tell, especially with O linemen, how, you know, how rankings and how ratings work. You can, you can, it's so easy to overlook a guy, a guy like Connor Robertson, who knows. How many players that we've had that win the first round? Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. It's a uh, oh, offensive line. It, all in all, I think it, I think it could be, it could be, uh, it could be what it was last year, which was, you know, pretty bad. Uh, yeah. But all in all, I think, I think again, it's not as good as it, I, I don't, I don't think it's as good as it's going to be, you know, midpoint of the year. I think we're going to improve a lot more. Uh, but at the in conclusion, I I personally think we got everything we could get out of this offensive line. Um, a guy like we didn't even touch on Hayden Connor. I mean, he looked good. Um, he does look good. Yeah, he looked good in the spring game, and apparently all spring, you know, he's looked he's looked really good too. Yeah. Um, I keep hearing his name, so that must mean something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the two deep. I mean, I. Ah oh man, I I here's the thing. I don't want to get into like just, you know calling dudes out and you know dumping on dudes but i mean we you could definitely you could there there were there were times where you know yeah you know dudes were getting you know just bodied you know just totally handled and it was like it was like okay these these freshmen can't come in soon enough so um, so yeah we'll we'll uh we'll we'll move on now to uh we'll go ahead and talk about tight ends i guess um tight ends being a really, a really, um, kind of maybe kind of overshadowed by the quarterback position, but tight ends probably in my opinion, being almost just as intriguing, um, as the quarterback position, you know, um, Jatavian Sanders showed out, um, you look great. He looked Bill, he, Bill look good too. He didn't play a ton, but he looked really good. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, Billingsley, Billingsley looked good. He, uh, yeah, he didn't, I don't think he neither. Well, I guess Jatavian didn't score either, but you know, neither of them scored, but I mean, you know, um, possession guy, I mean, they would, you know, really reliable, like check down throws. Uh, yeah. you know, we saw them on the field together a lot at the same time. Uh, many times, um, Gunner Helm, I mean, Gunner Helm was, uh, the thing with the, the thing with Gunner Helm that people, that people forget is, you know, we talk so much about, you know, oh, we need a blocking guy. We need a blocking guy. Gunner Helm is the blocking guy. People forget, people forget that he was mossing kids in high school. Right? Yeah, he was. So, I mean, it's just, it's the, 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 the fact of the matter is at, in this tight end room is there's a ton of talent, right? And it's just, and that's a really exciting room, especially, especially with a guy like Jatavian and, uh, and Jaleel Billingsley. Um, but, uh, but yeah, what were your, what were your kind of thoughts on, on the, on just the tight end in general, just over the course of the spring and in the spring game? Super athletic position for us right now, man. Like Sanders, he looked just great going down the middle. I know he got stripped on that one. <laughs> that was a great play, dude. He, his hands are just insane. He just got, he's got sticking fingers, dude. It's, it's pretty impressive. He's going to be a stud. I'm really excited about tight end. I thought he'd look really good just in motion, like, because, dude, Sark's offense, you know, they do so much motion with the tight end and weird schemes. I thought he looked good doing that. He didn't look, he didn't look out of place and awkward. You can tell that they've been working with him a lot. I'm glad that they kind of kept him off the field last year. Yeah. You know, just kept him kind of in the zone and working on his craft. He, I, I think he's going to be a stud, man. I really do. I think he might play way more than Billingsley. I really think that. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that, especially because of the fact that, um, you know, and Jatavian being the the sort of inline guy more who's going to, who who has a little bit probably better blocking ability than Jaleel, uh, but also is your Swiss Army knife that's going to be able to catch the ball, obviously, uh, too. Um, yeah, dude, t- dude, tight end, tight end is something, is something really, really, really interesting because it's, I mean, it's something that, you know, I mean, you had Cade Brewer, you had Jared Wiley. Um, they just weren't athletic guys, though, man. They just right. weren't. Right. I mean, you know, you had Cade Brewer, who you know maybe had 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 the reliable hands at at, at times. Um, you know, Jared Wiley is someone who it seemed like a lot of people were waiting on. You know, I we were waiting on it. You know, to, to just really just hit his stride, and it 
unfortunately kind of just never happened, you know, whether that be for whatever reason. As far as tight end goes, I think tight end is is a room that looked really good over the course of spring, uh, you know, just in general from reports that you would read and, you know, practice reports and just watching the spring game. I mean, seeing the production and seeing um, seeing everything that came out of that room. So uh, tight ends, dude, tight ends was really, really exciting. Um, uh, we can bump it to, we'll go ahead and do receivers since it's, since it's pretty yeah. close anyway. Um, dude, <laughs> Isaiah Nayor, man. Dude, he's, yeah, I, I've been super high on him. Probably higher than a lot of people were just cause like, I feel like he's getting overshadowed now by like Jai Hall and we already have Xavier Worthy, you know, and he's just kind of been pushed to the back cause he wasn't really like a high sought off sought after transfer cause he went to Wyoming, but dude, that guy's the real deal. He's so freaking fast, man. He's tall. Like he might end up being like, I think he's going to be our number two guy behind worthy for sure. That's just how I feel. Yeah, man. Just- he was, yeah, I, I, it's, I think, I think it's exactly, I mean, I think he was exactly as advertised, you know, co- coming out of the portal. Um, obviously yeah. uh, as you know, under, under, under ranked or lower ranked, uh, probably underdog <laughs> coming out of high school, but um, coming out of the transfer portal, He's just exactly as advertised, man. He's a long, lanky, you know, rangy guy, but you know, he, he's not just uh he's not just a 50, 50 ball guy. He's, I mean, dude, we'll, we'll touch on this in a second, but um, seeing, uh, seeing Isaiah and um, Ryan Watts lock up, you know, uh, almost every oh. play was, was like, that was awesome to see. Um, but yeah, man, I, you know, we could talk about the, the, the deep ball that he scored on, you know, it was just, you know, I, th- I think it was just like a post that he ran. It wasn't really, it wasn't really anything crazy. But it was like that ball went like 65 yards in, in the air and just like right in the numbers, man. We haven't had a guy able to throw that. And like, I don't know if we've ever had a guy with that kind of arm talent. I, I was just like, my jaw would hit the floor, bro, when that happened. It was insane. It was, it was in, in the stadium. Like it was cool because like, he ripped the ball and you know, it was almost like, I, I don't know. I feel like the stadium kind of got quiet for a second and then he caught it in the place lost the mind. So, but anyway, anyway, it was, it talk, we're talking about receivers here. <laughs> it was, it was, it was cool, man. Um, and then, uh, you know, Xavier worthy is doing Xavier worthy things. Um, you know, I mean, he, he, you know, he caught, he caught, I think he had a, one touchdown. He had the one touchdown yeah, side arm up the middle there from like the 15 yard line i think that's the one he had yeah little glance glance route slant route whatever whatever yep. you want to call it yeah um you know and I, I he caught a couple i think he caught a couple other ones maybe um Mo just tatered him on the sideline dude on that one of his plays i was like dude i don't know if he's gonna get back up and then he did and then the next play was the, the uh the nayer touchdown yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, Maurice Blackwell. We'll touch on that in a second. But dude, Maurice yeah. Blackwell, yeah, he popped him a little bit. That was Hard cool to see. um Jordan Whittington. Looks tough he, as hell as always. <laughs> we need him to stay healthy. He's got to stay healthy. Um, dude, dude, he's like third down. Like, think about think about what happened last year, you know, after he got hurt when you talk about game just kind of one-legged you know it was it was just the Xavier Worthy show at that point because they were already beat on a Bijan we couldn't block for Bijan and then Worthy everybody was just double teaming the whole time our offense just like went way downhill they pulled up a stat and it was like the first six games we averaged 44 and a half points and then the last six games we averaged uh 26 and Whittington went down in the sixth game of the season it just it, it totally just screwed our offense over it's, it's, it, it, I mean, it, it really, it goes to show, I mean, it's a testament to how reliable a guy like that is, how much a guy like that is needed. I mean, the spring that he's had just in general, not even just the game, just the, I mean, I think multiple reports said that like, yeah, Bijan is that guy, but like Jordan Whittington is having like the best spring out of everybody on the team. Him and like Roshan are just like the two underrated, just kind of unsung heroes of the team, in my opinion. Yeah, they just they have enough credit for what they do. Now we can kind of talk about, you know, the the twos. We can kind of talk about, you know, the Marcus Washingtons, the uh, you know, Kelvante Dixons of the world. Um, you know, uh, uh Dejon Harrison, there were a couple, you know. <sighs> Harrison and Washington, man, they just they're struggling with their hands. Yeah. Yeah, they dropped. I think Washington dropped 
one or two, and I know for a fact Harrison dropped two. Well, the one that he it wasn't really a drop, Quinn kind of overthrew him a little bit, but it was honestly on the receiver a little bit, in my opinion, too. But yeah, they, they struggled a little bit. It's 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 a it's tough. It, it's a little bit tough, you know. It's you could almost say, you know, that they're uh, I don't know how to dis- how to say it. It's they're, they're almost a little bit top heavy. It's like the talent's there. The talent is there on the one deep and even, you know, one A or one B um, when a Jai Hall comes and whatever, but, or even yeah. Brennan Thompson, you know, whoever, but, you know, it seems like, it seems like a guy like Marcus Washington and, uh, you know, Kelvante Dixon, they're just struggling putting it all together. Kelvante they Dixon are. is such an athletic dude. Kelvante, I mean, one of the fastest people on the team. The other day, he just, Dixon could not find the ball, man. Like he was just struggling running his routes. Right. He had two, two really big missed opportunities. One was for a touchdown. The other one was like, I think it was like a for a forty yard play down the sideline. I think that was Dixon. But yeah, they they both just those are three guys that, that struggled for sure. Yeah, the the addition of that 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 is something else we can talk about. The the addition of a Jai Hall. You know, I, I made a video, but you know, I probably didn't touch enough on like you know, kind of rep distribution, how that's going to work, you know, um, it's, I mean, really, honestly, it's probably, it, they're all going to play, dude, Marcus, I mean, excuse me, um, Ajay Hall, Jordan Whittington, Nayor, Worthy, they're all going to play. Somebody's going to get, uh, that's just something that, somebody's going to get hurt, so we'll see how it shakes out, but I feel like we are going to lose someone, but I don't know who's going to be yet. Yeah, hopefully he's not Whittington. Yeah, I (laughs) No way. I don't think we lose him. We can talk, we can touch on um we can touch on running backs, dude. Um oh, running man. dude. We talked about this a little bit yesterday, man. Jonathan <laughs> Jonathan Brooks, man. That dude. For sure. He <laughs> Bijan leaves, I think. Yeah, yeah. He, I think I think, yeah. I mean, yeah, we he he definitely strikes me as, you know, probably he's probably the dude after after uh you know, after Roshan and Bijan leave. Um I mean, I mean, dude, he's got, I mean, so many things about his game vision, right? Like it's like, he'll, it, it seems like he'll see a hole where there's not a hole. And then like, yep. as soon as he'll, he'll foresee it, like he'll have that foresight. And then like, and then it's there. It's just, it's crazy. We've got like so many running backs that can just do it all, you know, like blue and um, Brooks. They're just like so good at out of the backfield. They're just, they have well-rounded games, you know, and they have the perfect body type for it. It's, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, obviously elephant in the room, you know, Bijan did, didn't play at all, um, you know, yeah. which is, I, I think, I personally, you know, that's fine. Because, like, why why bang that guy up? We already know what, what, what we're going to get out of him. I, I was actually more excited to see the young guys. Exactly. Exactly. Personally. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and that's something I touched on, you know, in, in, uh, a previous video uh i i don't i don't even know which one but it was i don't even i don't even really i we know what we get with Bijan. even Roshan, exactly. i mean he that that play that roshan had we know what we get with those dudes you know i was more excited we're more excited to see we were more excited to see what those other two dudes specifically you know um jonathan and Jaden, what they were yeah. going to do and you know Jaden, Jaden was a little more quiet you know but you know again we're talking yeah. about he's a kid like he's he's a he's a kid exactly. still and it wasn't a true spring game. Like everybody missed out on a lot of plays because it wasn't really like, it was only what an hour worth of gameplay. I know they only, they played a couple hours, but it wasn't very, yeah. It was a pretty short game. What was it? Yes. Like that? yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not very long. So. Yeah, it was, but man, wide receiver and running back, you know, and, and our, our two rooms and even tight end to a certain extent are two, two, uh position groups where or three i guess position groups where it's like man it's 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 almost we it seems like we're we're solid there um quarterbacks <laughs> yeah. quarterbacks man um obviously quinn had you know the the bigger plays he had you know um the touchdown to to isaiah uh that was the first one he had the uh, the glance route, the red zone touchdown to uh, to Xavier. Um, I what I so one thing I do like. Um, and shout out shout out to uh, to Texas Homer. We were talking about this a little bit at the game, but uh, you know the fact that they gave both quarterbacks reps with the ones, um, 
you know, with the one O line, it, it was cool that, you know, each it's like each guy is getting an equal shot. You know, it's not yeah. like Hudson. The thing with Hudson, he, he did. I mean, he didn't look bad. You know, I mean, he, he didn't no, look bad at all, man. He, he, he looked really good. Um, you know, and, and be- better than he's looked, uh, you know, his entire career, um, more comfortable, you know. There was a timing issue between the receiver and the quarterback. It wasn't so much that they weren't accurate because they missed quite a bit of throws, don't get me wrong, but I, I, I felt it was more of a timing thing because they were, they were throwing to so many different receivers, you know, and like, I don't know. I just felt they were out of time, but, you know, it's spring. I think it'll come later in the summer once they get used to everything. For sure. Because Quinn is so – dude, he hasn't played football in so long. Right. I thought a lot of his stuff was the, was the timing. Another thing me and me and Homer were talking about was um, at least for the moment, like at the time being, um, like at this current moment, Hudson probably has a little bit of a leg up on Quinn in terms of, you know, kind of mid-range throws, you know, kind of like down the middle throws. Um, like the football knowledge aspect of it currently because he's, in, he's been in this offense for two years now. And he knows where guys are going to be. He knows the routes we run more. Right. And timing's probably a little bit better. But, yeah, I, I feel like he just he just has more of a grasp on the offense. I feel like when you're really going to see Quinn kind of take it over, and this is just my opinion, once summer rolls around and uh, he just kind of gets a better grasp of the offense, gets timing down better, I feel like that's when you're going to see Quinn take that next step and not just be a deep ball guy. Right. Right. And, you know, I, I honestly, one, uh, another thing, honestly, and this is a little bit more abstract, you know, a little bit less um, gameplay or just, you know, tangible stuff in terms of a quarterback. I think Quinn, the re, I, obviously, I, 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 I've said it multiple times. I think Quinn is going to end up winning, winning this starting role. Um, yeah. I think personally, even from the standpoint of, uh the mental edge that he has the confidence edge exactly because that's hudson's knock i I feel like he's got all the tools but he's rattled in the pocket too much and he just doesn't have the confidence maybe that that quinn does i mean you can see it in the arkansas game that was when he hudson kind of cracked you know yeah absolutely and always heard about hudson he doesn't have the the mental aspect of it he's a super smart kid obviously but he doesn't he doesn't have that dog that dog in him like you know quinn ewers does Right. And it's, you know, and the thing is, the thing is, anything could happen. You know, I, God forbid, you know, we end up in a situation where, um, you know, something, something happens, uh, you know, something gets, Quinn gets hurt, whatever, who, whatever yeah. happens. We're so, you know, we got card again. And it's, it's, it's all this to say, you know, both quarterbacks, both quarterbacks are good, man. It's just, it's, it's just, I hate to judge Hudson too hard on that stuff, like getting rattled because right. our line was bad last year. Right. You know? Right. And I feel like he would probably be a different player behind a better O line, but right. we'll see. Yeah. I, I think when we, when we talk, the thing is to clarify, I think, you know, I, I mean, you were on the same page. It's just, you know, kind of explaining for, for, for everyone else. I think that, you know, all this to say Hudson card is a talented dude. I think yeah. the, the fact of the matter is, Quinn Ewers, at least in our opinion, is is just that much better. Is just that good. And the writing is already on the wall when Quinn is probably a little bit better than Hudson as it is now, and he's already a lot younger than him. Yeah. And the offense two years like Hudson has. I mean, the writing's on the wall. You know, once once they get a whole summer going, I think that's when you're going to take it over. Quick side note, uh, you know, Malik obviously didn't play. Um, but uh, you know, we saw him. I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if what they showed on the on the Longhorn Network feed. But um, you know, he warmed up. You know, we watched him warm up, and um, it's just it's it's so it's so crazy how big that guy is, man. Like six five six. He looks like Dy out there, but like does. bigger. He does, man. I'm so I. He's someone who you know. This is probably a conversation for another video, man. But I, I'm excited about him, dude. Like it, like, if we get you know. If we get Arch, I'm excited about what that might bring, what that might mean for Arch, Malik Murphy, just that entire, that entire kind of dynamic. That'd be great. Yeah. Really quick before we move it to uh before we move it to defense. Um, you know, they did run some special teams. I don't know how much you got to see. Um so I, if, if you even got to, you know, draw anything from from that, but you know, did you see anything on the special teams that uh, 
uh, I mean, Burt Auburn, he made that first field goal. I, I can't remember the distance. I think it was in the 40s somewhere, mid 40s. I, I feel like, I, th- I feel like uh, kick, the kicking game is going to be a struggle this year, a little bit. I don't think we're going to be terrible, but I don't think we're going to be, I mean, we're not going to have ticker to kicker anymore. I mean, we're, we're not going to have that kind of reliability anymore. I feel like we're going to have to kind of go for it on a fourth here and there. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be kind of a struggle, I believe. I, I, I'm with you. I think, um, you know, and, and I, I'm, I'm with you, but I don't know. We'll see, man. Will Stone, who knows? Uh, but the fact of the, 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 the fact of the matter is when you talk about Cameron Dicker, those are big shoes to fill, right? I mean, he did, exactly. he Hard. did both. He did both last year, um, you know, kicking and punting. Uh, well, Dicker's our all time scorer, isn't he? he? Oh, uh, I don't know. Is he? I'm not sure. I'm going to look that up. I got a computer right here. Um, yeah, no, go ahead. Um, I, while you're doing that, I'm going to touch on uh, punting. Sure. Um, Isaac Pearson, at least at least from what I saw, um, you know, for the most part, he looked he looked pretty dang good. I mean, he was getting it up. One one thing that one thing that I um, that I liked what I saw is the hang time. It was, you know, he would, he would, he gets the ball way up there sometimes. Uh, he did have a couple where he, where he, uh, you know, it seemed a little short. There was wind that day. You know, I can say I was there. There was wind, um, you know, so that did have a little bit to that, that could have had a factor. Um, but I mean, you know, Isaac Pearson is someone who I had in my uh, breakout player, um, maybe by default, even just because he's going to be a guy who we're going to be relying on a lot this year. Um, but at least from what I saw, I liked what I saw from Isaac Pearson. Um, what you got for us? Did you find? Uh, I couldn't find it actually. It's a big article. I, I don't, it's not going by points. It just keeps telling me touchdowns. I'd have to dig, but yeah, I'm not going to waste my time on it. <laughs> the fact, the fact of the matter is, yeah. like I said, huge shoes to fill, huge shoes to fill in, in for, for um, Cameron Dicker, right? It's, you know, whatever, whoever, whoever comes in, it's going to be, you know, whether it's Will Stone that's kicking field goals or, you know, um, Bert Auburn, we're going to see. Um, obviously, there's not there's not a lot to pull from special teams, especially. Well, of course, um, they don't really emphasize it. You know, like I didn't even obviously I didn't see any punting. I didn't see how the punter looked on TV because it, they, so they. So they didn't show they, it. They didn't have that. They just, you know do the they just do the difference for the for the offense but got you yeah i got you um defense defense we can start we can wherever you want to start where do you want to start on defense um i guess we can start defensive line and just work our way down let's do it yeah i mean obviously the defensive line look look great in my opinion but it's so hard to draw because they're playing a weaker offensive line right i don't want to overemphasize like what what the whole fan base did last year thinking that we had like the best D line in the country. Right. Turns out it's terrible. But like the guys that stood out to me was like Baron Sorrell. He looked great, man. In my opinion, just Justice Finkley looked pretty good for being a younger guy. I thought those are the two guys. And then um, obviously Sweat looked good, you know, just, but we know what we got from him. And uh, Coburn looked good. Our, our interior is solid, man. I feel like our interior is just going to be hard to run against. Bar- I thought Baron Sorrell. I, I really thought Baron Sorrell looked really good. Um, he showed a lot of um, a lot of what what we've been hearing from spring uh, and a lot of kind of what we saw last year. Byron Murphy, dude. Byron Murphy is like wrecking ball. He's a wrecking ball, man. It's 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 insane, and it's it's and it's good to see. You know, it, someone especially especially a guy like that who plays like that. You know, we, you could talk about we could talk about Keandre Coburn, right? who's, who's been reliable for us. In my opinion, he's been, yeah. he's been, you know, which, you know, what you get with Keandre Coburn. When he was out there, he was our best defensive lineman on the field. In my opinion, I'm with he you. He was more pressure than the rest of the guys. Yeah. So yeah, I think I mean, he's going to go up from here and he's, the guy's just massive. I mean, he's huge. He's a true sophomore, right? Yeah. 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 He's, he's a true sophomore. Um, uh, Moro Ojimo, I thought looked pretty good um as well as of, well as what'd you say i kind of missed moro i didn't i can't recall plays that he made or anything like that but i'm sure he looked okay there were a couple yeah there were a couple plays where he stood out to me um more so uh alfred collins stuck out to me yeah that's he's he's someone who who i think everybody who who follows who probably follows recruiting is 
someone Alfred Collins is someone that 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 we're waiting on you know um all the all all the talent in the world do all the all the measurables last year hopefully he's over that he's he he's someone who you know man it, it, it once it clicks for him there's no I don't think there's I'm not sure if there's a single lineman in the big 12 that can contain that guy man once no. it, once it gets once it's all put together you put together his athleticism his understanding of schemes once that's all put together man I mean he's he could be a day one guy easily absolutely but he's together it's uh, yeah we uh we got to uh I, I I personally didn't get to talk to him but we got to we got to go on the field after the game uh, and uh you know I was I was kind of with uh with Steven and those guys and whatnot and um I dude I got I stood right next to uh Alfred Collins dude and it's just like you know I'm, I'm a small guy as it is right like I'm already small but like dude, he's like 690 right yeah dude yeah he's massive it's insane so but you know where he's someone we're waiting on to put it to put it to kind of just put it all together um so uh yeah defensive line as a whole um looked pretty good you know there's a certain point where you're kind of talking about you know a zero-sum game because of the fact that they're going against an offensive line who is known to struggle I feel like line's going to be one of the most improved positions on the whole team too you said, uh, i don't you said the defensive line yeah i feel like that's going to be one of the most improved positions on the whole team if we get especially if we get mathis because i we're not going to have those low sack numbers again and i feel like we're not just going to let quarterbacks sit back there all day and throw i mean partially that might that may that may have been our scheme last year maybe we just didn't have the right personnel to match it up quite yet i, I don't know what it was but yeah we just i don't know i don't see us getting any worse i feel like that's going to be a big improvement i think so too and you know uh, i mean yeah, we, I mean, shoot, we can talk about it for a second, man. O'Shawn Mathis, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure if his presence could be more um, needed. I mean, you talk, I mean, you talk about, you talk about, we just talked about Baron Sorrell. We just talked about Justice Finkley, who looked really good. You know, I've said it, a, I think I've said it once before. No disrespect towards any of those two dudes. Baron Sorrell just needs to fill out a little bit more, and that's okay. He just, he just yeah. needs to put on a little more muscle. Uh, Justice Finkley needs to learn college football he needs he's he's trying to get acclimated once again shout out to justice finkley's parents we met them too i met them too um really really i mean really really nice people just like super super down to earth people um they watch they watch our stuff too which is which is really cool he's got the size he's got plenty of size and power i feel like once he gets his uh pass rush moves down the guy's gonna be a savage on the edge yeah, yeah, man. When you start, when you start to talk, you know, you. I feel like it's all you, you can lack length a little bit, and it's yeah, man. Yeah. It's, but you know, all this to say, the present, you know, bringing just um, bringing Oshawn Mathis on is probably best for everybody involved. I mean, you know, you don't, you don't. What you don't want to have happen is throw Justice Finkley in to the fire too quickly, right? To where he can't, he can't even learn anything, right? Exactly. Yeah. I feel like once we get Mathis, that won't happen. Right. But I, Mathis, I don't think, I don't know if it's a guarantee or not, but I feel like we're more than likely to, to get him. We find out what, four days? Uh, it is 26. So yeah, four days. I think they said the 30th is, is, yep. is the day. So we'll see. Nice. Man. I thought the linebackers look pretty good, man. I mean, but we're just so thin there. I feel like we have talent. I feel like uh, Jalen Ford and DeMarvin Overshawn are going to be great. I really do. But we just got to keep them healthy. Right. Right. Yeah. The, the, the thing with linebacker is, I don't know, most people that have probably seen my videos know that I'm a firm believer in Jalen Ford. Um, and you know, even DeMarvion Overshone. Um, but I mean, that's a very, very thin room still. Um, I, we, you do, I, 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 I've said it probably three times now. You, you probably, you're, you're probably still looking for a portal guy. Oh, we need a portal. If we, yeah. We need a portal guy for sure, man. We're one injury away from that just being an absolute liability. It is. It's. It, it's. It can. It, it can get. It looks good right now. It, 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 it. For the most part, it looks good right now. David Benda. Honestly, David Benda is someone who I personally like a lot. Um, oh, that reminds me. Shout out to um, David Benda. Well, shout out to David Benda. But shout out to uh, David Benda's mom and I think his sister. We met them. Uh, Stephen from Fanatic Perspective. 
uh, me and him met uh, David Bender's mom there at the spring game. Uh, she came up to us. I guess she recognized our YouTube videos and whatnot. Um, so shout out to her. She was a really, really nice, nice lady. Um, David Bender is someone who, David you know. Bender, I, I had to say that. He looked awesome. He looks a lot bigger. Yeah. He's serious weight, dude. Yeah, man. So, again, but that's still, I mean, we're talking too deep here. I mean, it's still, it's still a thin room uh, right now. It, 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 for the most part, it looks good right now, but it can turn, it can do yeah. a little lady really quickly. Uh, and I feel like the secondary has a good mix up of hard hitters and guys that can probably play and play on an Island. Like Mo Blackwell, man, he's going to mix in good. Uh, Crawford, those guys can just lay the wood on people, dude. So, and Baron as well. I mean, I saw Barron just smoking dudes out there. Defensive backs was probably was probably the biggest. I mean, there were probably there's probably more important needs on the team. I think we've already established, but defensive backs is something that I really, really had my eye on um, at the spring game. Like probably more so than anything else, just because it, it's it is such a watch out in space. You know, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's easy. It's easier to watch. It's easier to see. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's man. It looked, it looked, it looked, I, I have, I have quite a bit of optimism about the defensive backs. Um, you touched on um, Maurice Blackwell who yeah. probably had, I would, I would, I would call it a little bit of a, of a kind of coming out party uh, at the, at the spring game, but we talked about it a second ago, just, you know, dropping, dropping the bomb on Xavier worthy. Um yeah. <laughs> and that wasn't even the only time there were a couple other hits that he had no regards whatsoever <laughs> i liked it <laughs> um keaton crawford keaton crawford as well i know you mentioned him uh you know he had that i don't know i don't know if you were able to see it on the on the longhorn network you know the the what he that that play he had against keelan robinson although i think keelan robinson did score um but that's keelan robinson one of the fastest dudes on the team yeah right? that's like, you forgot to touch on him, man. That guy looks so fast. Yeah. It was yeah. good, man. Be a good kind of different scheme in the offense, you know. He adds he just adds a little bit of he adds a little bit of bit of a little bit of lemon, a little bit of salt to the exactly. to the room. Um, you know, because I mean when you talk about you know the the running backs that are already there, you know, he's a speedster, man. He it's just he adds something that that you don't that you I mean you don't get in Bijan. He's faster than Bijan. It's it's that's that much is true. So um so yeah he adds a total a total um fast guy on the team just like in in space I would say you have faster guys like straight line but he's right. yeah we gotta get him we gotta give him the ball in space on sweeps and stuff like that he's gonna be deadly with that for sure um yeah um safeties man uh we'll, we'll move it back to safeties yeah Keaton Crawford Looked pretty good. Um, Anthony, Anthony Cook, looked yeah, we were on the same. We had the same idea. Anthony Cook, um, yeah, he looked he looks really comfortable. Um, you know, he's a guy who's kind of gotten moved around his entire career. You know, yep. position wise and scheme wise, he's you know he's been I, through it. I think he's always been a safety. I don't think he ever had the hips for corner. Okay. Just my, I think he's more of a safety. He's just a bigger dude, you know. And like, I feel like he. Can, just have that well-rounded game back there. Yeah, he he's someone who you know he he did have that he did have that that interception you know on Quinn. Um, Quinn kind of uh, he didn't read the pre-snap. He just right. kind of threw. Yeah, <laughs> and he Cook probably didn't have to move much at all to get that. No, he, <laughs> he, it was pretty much just a bad decision by Quinn. It was. He didn't. Yeah, he didn't read the safety. <laughs> Um, but yeah, man, Anthony Cook, Anthony Cook, you know, hopefully, hopefully that translates, um, probably, probably the, uh, the most, uh, publicized and the most talked about defensive back, Jade Barron is Barron's just right back there, man. He's that guy's good. He's going to be really freaking good. He's just holding it down, man. It seems like, it seems like he totally holds it down. You know, I think if I understand correctly, I think he's still repping a little bit at corner, like he still reps at corner. And yeah. obviously, when you talk about, um, you know, when there's not a nickel on the field, you know, he's he's probably going to be playing corner too. When you move, uh, you know, when you move a set, when you bring on another linebacker, um, yeah. you know, he's gonna he's gonna see the field at corner, I'm sure too. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, you said it earlier. He was, you know, he was knocking some heads um, 
all day, all spring, really. I mean, it's it's yeah. he's someone who is probably, I mean, at the moment, probably the, the best defensive back on the team, man. Yeah, I, I believe so. And that, that's the thing. We finally have something that we've lacked for a long time is we have a hard hitting secondary. We haven't had that in a long time. And the thing is, like, if you're if you are going to give up yards, you got to be able to have a different edge and like be able to hit people hard to make them think twice about coming up the middle. You know, like it just adds a different aspect of it. You know, like for what we do, last year, still, I think we're going to make up for it hitting this year. One thing I did want to touch on, we did see um, JD Coffee was in uh, was in the knee brace. Um, yeah, he was, he was sidelined, uh, which is unfortunate. You know, I, I have him. I, I personally I had him in my in my breakout player video. Um, you know, I don't know. Ho- hopefully I don't I, I don't even know what exactly the problem is Think about that. Hopefully it's not an ACL or anything. I hope not, man, because, you know, he's some dude. He's someone who I really like still. You know, um, he's but, someone who, who dude, he's he could easily he could, you know, we talk about spring and whatnot, but like dude anything can happen in 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 real time in the season and he's someone sure. who, I have, who I have a lot of faith in uh hopefully he can come back because I I personally like him a lot um Jaron Thompson Jaron Thompson had himself a pretty good day um I, I would describe him as someone that he's just old reliable you know exactly he looked a lot better than he did last year that's for sure he kind of had a sophomore slump too he did he lacked a lot of coverage skill last season and like, and when he was a freshman, though, that he was just a ball hawk. So hopefully, he can kind of get back on track. I think, I, I think we touched on this a second ago uh, or a minute ago. You know, he had that, he had that strip on uh, on Jatavia. It was that was that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. Well, uh, in real game time, I feel like that would have gotten blown dead. But I don't know, man. It's I'd have to go back and watch it. It was crazy. It was a crazy play. It was a pretty funny one thing. One thing that I do want to touch on on that on that on that uh that happened on that play. Um, I'm glad I remembered this. Um, me and uh, Texas Homer and I were uh were at, well, I mean Texas Homer kind of just he was he was sitting behind me and he was like he made a comment. He was like right before this play. This was this was hilarious. Right before that play. Uh-huh. He said he was like, um, he was like, ah, man, we need to get, uh, we need to get the Tavy on the ball up the middle. Lo uh-huh. and behold, man, they hit him on yeah. the, on that, on that little seam route. And, uh, right. and we, we lost our minds. And like, in the midst of all that, we saw that the ball got stripped and we just like lost our minds even more. It was, it was funny, man. It was, it was hilarious. And it sucks that it happened to Sanders. Cause like, that was just a great catch and play, but dude, it was, it was pretty funny. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, man. And I, you know, <clears throat> I don't think that, you know, I, that's, you know, it, it, it happened and all that, but you know, it's, it stuff like that just happens. It's like, no, you no. Said, it's- yeah, like you said, it probably, honestly, <laughs> it gets blown dead. It probably gets blown dead. Um, you know, in, in real time, in a real game, you know, corners looked not bad. Um, you know, they didn't look too, too bad. Um, I think in, in my opinion, the one that probably stood out the most that probably had the best day, the better day, uh, was Ryan Watts. Um, I would go right with say Ryan Watts, but then again, I'd have to go look at it again. How much did they really throw to Jameson? Right. Because then, then, then you have the conversation like, okay, we didn't hear Deshaun Jameson's name and right. that's, that that, that that can be a good thing. Like you're 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 a corner. You don't. Well, he's had what four interceptions this spring, or three? Right. I mean, he's somebody who's just apparently, you know, according to Sark, according to all these outlets, he's been a ball hawk all spring, right? Um, you know, the only time you want to hear his name is if he's picking the ball off. So you know, all all times other than that, you know, um, yeah, he was. It seemed like you know he was probably just hopefully locking dudes up you know like you said oh now i now that i now that i think about it i probably do have to go back and and watch that but yeah uh, terrence brooks we talked about terrence brooks a little bit he again we're talking about another dude who's just a kid like yeah i'm not yeah you can't really even like say anything about it because what is 16 like yeah i think yeah i think he just turned 17 I i don't even know but i mean we're tired he's a he's an entire kid still and it's like you know, uh, there, there were, and we're talking, I mean, he's trying to bring down, you know, there was, I think he played, he got just stiffed by Roshan Johnson. And it's like, okay, but that's yeah. Roshan Johnson. A good tackling aspect of it. Yeah. But neither did the whole secondary on that play. That was just bad. That was bad tackling. Man. <laughs> that was, that was flashbacks to last year. It was. <laughs> Someone who stood out that, sh- 
oh man, that kind of struggled a little bit was Jameer Johnson. Yeah. Um, he does. You know, I think that I, and you know, when you have to, dude, when you have to cover Xavier, when you have to cover Isaiah, like, you're going to get smoked, man. Like, <laughs> you're you're going to some, you're going to lose some. Hard to play corner, man. Oh, yeah, dude. It's, it's, it's something that it's, I mean, I, you know, I played corner in high school. It's something, you know, and I like, I mean, it's established. I'm a, I'm a smaller guy. And like, yeah, dude, are you having to cover people? I mean, it's, it's, it's a hard position. All in all, man, um, corner, I, I'm not, I'm not too terribly worried necessarily about corner. No, um, I, I forget about our secondary. Yeah, it's a little young but I feel like they're going to come into their own and hopefully just, if anything, just be physical, man. That's what we need for. Like last year, we just, we were not physical in the back end, in my opinion. We just weren't up to par there, but I think this year, man, we got some hard hitters. For sure. And it's, you know, we talked about it a minute ago, but, you know, seeing Ryan Watts lock up with Isaiah Nay or like, you know, all in all, just all encompassing, like playing just a little bit more of a physical like you said, a little bit more of a physical brand of football, you know, um, and when you have the chess pieces to do that in a guy like Ryan Watts, who who can provide that 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 lock up, you know, uh, you know, cover I, cover zero. I haven't had a corner that tall in a long time either. Like Delonte Davis, he was a pretty guy, but it's yeah. been years. We haven't had a long. We've all our corners are like five ten, you know. Right. So have a, a big dude that can. You know, maybe play an island and lock some guys up. Can you think of anything? Uh, can you think of anything just maybe over the course of the entire spring or maybe the spring game um, specifically something that just totally surprised you? Two things that surprised you positively and negatively. Let's see here. Um, I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but. <laughs> oh, you're good. Positively was, I would say, how well Nair fit into the offense and how well he was doing. Because, like, dude, I'm not going to lie. He looked like the second best receiver out there just because I, I think it were these hands down our best. But he definitely – yeah, he looked a lot better than what I thought he was going to. I, I knew he was going to be good. But dude, he just looked insane. He looked way faster than his tape, put it that way. Right. I'll go defense. Our defensive line looked a lot better than I thought, than I thought it would be. Guys looked a lot bigger than what I thought they would. and. Honestly, this, I think the uh, strength and conditioning program is really starting to work out. The guys just look huge, like way bigger. I mean, beating a dead horse here, but offensive line, I just, I didn't, I just didn't like a lot of that. And then, um, probably the the kicking game, the special teams. I would say, I'm worried yeah. about kicking a lot because that's important. Yeah, yeah, no, it is, man. It is. Um, yeah, man, for me, it's I, I asked the question. I, 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 don't, I can't even think. Um, it's I think, tough. I think the uh, the thing that probably, honestly, the probably one of the po- a positive thing was uh, just the defensive back room as a whole. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, because th- th- there were questions, there were absolutely questions there. And, you know, pro- probably, honestly, more specifically, the safety room is probably a pleasant surprise. Um, for sure. So that would probably be my answer to that. And then, ah, oh, man, again, yeah offense it's just well, those, be the fresh the fresh we need those fresh we need we need we need class we need a flood yeah. watch we need the flood watch uh class of 2022 oh, to uh, coach these guys up to the current the current ones we have i mean i don't know how far that goes i feel like we probably peaked out but you never know it's it's uh it's nonetheless nonetheless it is it is an exciting time um you know to be a longhorn fan this is something we talk about off screen a lot it's it's exciting um to fans it's exciting to players coaches recruits a little bit of a segue you know we landed um ryan niblet and um trey wisner yeah um, both of which i i on, i'm gonna be honest i haven't seen all of their tape i've seen i've i've seen both of them i've seen some wisner tape, but not niblet no it's i it's it's ex- i mean all in all you know this is probably for another video but you know goes to show it's exciting it's appealing something is you know attractive to these guys yeah, and that was oh you lock for a long time right yeah yeah that's a good i forgot to bring that up yeah he was he was like a he was like you know 
prophesized apparently yeah he's been like linked to them for years you know and yeah, yeah that's, tag him. um but yeah man all in all it's just it's it's an exciting time it's it's um it's exciting but we're i think we're all uh, we're still we're still very um cautious cautiously optimistic man you took the words out of my mouth cautiously optimistic it's not we're not out here saying that we think we're gonna you know win a championship you know win a national championship but it's it's at, it at least kind of seems like okay things might be turning in the right direction right it's it's, yeah, it's an exciting time um uh so yeah this was this was a really cool really cool video um expect to see expect to see him in more videos guys um again michael's a really cool guy um super super um insightful all things Texas football. Um, you know, we talk all the time, really, really good friends and whatnot. So expect to see him in more videos, um, more stuff coming, more content coming. Um, you know, I'm a little bit behind on the, uh, on the, uh, you know, commitments and stuff. I would like to, I would like to come out, you know, a little bit more, uh, consistent, consistently with those. Um, and something that I'm really excited for is I am going to have a spring, uh, a spring game vlog coming. I'm not too experienced with vlogging, but, um, that will be coming, you know, I, I, I recorded a lot of different stuff, uh, while I was there, you know, some content with, uh, you know, at the autograph signing, I got to meet a ton of players, um, you know, and I, I went with my girlfriend and with my two cousins. Um, so that'll be coming out. That's a video I'm really excited about because, you know, it, it'll, it'll just be really cool. I like, I don't get to go down there very often guys. Thank you for sticking around for, to, for, for the entirety of this video. If you made it this far, um, you know, be sure to like, like this video. If you liked it, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family. Um, give me a look on Twitter. I'm on there pretty much every day at enemy horns. I'll put that on the screen for you somewhere right here. Uh, and we'll see you guys in the next one. I'll hook them. Okay.